In this video, I'm going to take the Mercedes 190E and redesign it into something that could be built today. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From website and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. The thing with the 190E is one of these cars that as the older I get, the more I start to appreciate the clean design of this era. We're going to talk more about that in just a second and who's responsible for this this beautiful 190e here and also of course try to take this shape apply modern graphics and bumper integrations and so on to make it look like a car that could be built today but before we do that I want to take a minute to thank today's sponsor Squarespace one of the great features of Squarespace is the drag and drop portfolio builder it's super easy to customize and design with templates already optimized to be viewed on any device you can even add password protected pages to share private work with clients Having trouble coming up with a unique logo? Let the built-in logo builder do the work for you. Just type in your business name and you'll have a beautiful logo in no time. If you're selling your art and designs online, use the Squarespace commerce platform to sell directly to your customers online with customizable e-commerce templates. You can even create your own membership site now, which I wish was around when I was building my site. This makes it so much easier to manage your online classes and courses. Start with your free trial today at squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch head over to squarespace.com slash the sketch monkey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code the sketch monkey so what I want to show you here is the evolution of the so-called c-class the 190e is the predecessor of the first c-class that came out in 1994 and that's the car we have up here and just have a look when we go through these designs I want you to focus on the the shoulder lines of these designs and and also the proportions more so the shoulder line because they have a lot Mercedes are experimenting a lot with the shoulder line as we go through the generations here and it's really interesting to see but let's have a look at the original 190e up here at the top you can see that it's a very very clean design very boxy like this but at the same time it's one of the most aerodynamic shapes of sedans ever made even by modern standards so Mercedes and the designers they knew exactly what they were doing here. And what really defines this in the E-Class of this time is this thick C-pillar right here. And on top of that, how the greenhouse almost grows out of this platform right here. So we have the greenhouse just sticking out, growing from this base block of uh, car or body mass that is the rest of the body of the car. Now, if we go down to the 1994 C-Class here, this is the first C-Class ever. I think it's a beautiful design as well. And it's a beautiful transition or modernization from the from the 190e it's a huge step when it comes to the graphics of the car and the integration of the bumpers the integrations of the lights the grill everything is more fluid here but the base proportions are still there we still have this boxy bottom part right here and then we have the greenhouse sticking out in a pretty still pretty angular shape although it's a, a little bit softer here and a little bit more integrated and we also on top of that have a really strong shoulder line in in this generation uh, C-Class, the first one. As you can see right here, it stretches from this point right here. You can barely see it right here, but it's it's there. You have this line going right here. So a strong shoulder line from the get-go in the first generation C-Class. Another thing I love about this generation C-Class are these AMG mono, monoblock wheels and the front end of this design. I think it's a traditional Mercedes face. The, it looks the best, in my opinion, on the R129 SL from this era as well. It's just a beautiful beautiful era of Mercedes design and we're going to talk about that more when we get into the redesign here. Now going into the 2001 C-Class right here you can see now we have huge changes in even the proportions of the car because now it gets a lot more bubblier a lot rounder the headlights are now round instead of square like we have in the traditional Mercedes look they're now round and on top of that we have rounded corners almost everywhere in this greenhouse right here and the C-pillar this this is the big change going from the 94 C-Class to the 2001. We do have a thick C-pillar, but it's a lot more elliptical right now. It, it, it's designed more with an ellipse or rather than a ruler, if that makes sense, this, the, the next generation C-Class here. But what we do have here as well is still we have a pretty decent shoulder line that kind of breaks in to the lower part of the windows. So it continues here in the windows and then you can see it comes back right here, very subtle. It's not 
not super defined, but it's still there and it still connects the front and the rear of the car. Moving on to the 2008 C-Class right here. Now we're starting to dial it back a little bit, this roundness of Mercedes and all of these design languages, they're, they're visible across the lineup throughout these decades here. And that's the thing that I, ju I just want to mention here, that this is the problem that I think BMW has. You can change drastically, dramatically from generation to generation, but within the generations, you should have a consistent front fascia and brand identity. The design that is uh, the face of the brand needs to have some sort of continuation across the lineup. Mercedes have done this really well, even up until today. BMW today is, in my opinion, completely lost when it comes to having the same lineup, same generation. You can Within this generation today of BMW, you have too many different front fascias and it dilutes the brand identity in a very severe way. Now, for the 2008 model right here, as I said, they went a little bit more structured here. Same goes for the S-Class and the E-Class of the time. They have the same kind of changes made to them from the previous generation. And we have a shoulder line that is very interesting here. It dips very far down on the body. You can see it here and it kind of connects to this part right here, which is underneath the grill and underneath the headlight. There is a little chamfer going right here, which connects to the shoulder line. It's not a bad looking design. I kind of prefer this actually over this design right here, just because of the simple fact that we have more of a uh, reminiscent headlight design and sharper, and we don't have this roundness that we have in the 2001 model up there. But the greenhouse, as you can see, we don't have the thickness in the C pillar that we're used to seeing on Mercedes, and it's still a pretty organic looking right there. So we're, we're going further and further away from the original 190E, which is pretty normal, I guess. But at the same time, if it was me, I prefer sedans to look like sedans, proper German sedans, which means a little boxier shape like we have in the first generation C-Class and the 190E. We also have uh, this line right here, of course, and this fender right here, you can see that it's very pronounced. And if you look at the S-Class of the time, it's even more pronounced than this. It's a very muscly uh, side surface of the S-Class of this time. So now moving on to the 2015. So if you look at these, I think this up here, the, two, uh, the 1994 connects better with the 2008 C-Class and the 2001 C-Class looks like a predecessor to the 2015 C-Class right here. This is more organic, just like the C-Class that just went out of production. And this is more boxy, just like the first generation C-Class up there. It's very interesting to see. And look, just look at the difference in shoulder line here compared to the previous. In the previous generation, as I said, we had this sloping shoulder line like this, going from high in the rear to low in the front. Now, on this generation C-Class, we have almost like a, a inversion of that, the inverted line of the previous generation. So we have going from high here, continuing here, and then just dipping down the further back we go. Doesn't really connect to anything here, but this line does. So we do have one line that connects across the car, which is a good idea to have on a Mercedes, specifically a sedan like the C-Class. The greenhouse is very much like the previous generation up here. Not much ch change there. We still have a rather thin C pillar compared to the previous earlier generations of the C class, but it's still to me, it's a good looking design. This generation C class, I'm a fan of it specifically in the uh, AMG setup when you have uh, a little bit lower stance and the correct wheels on the C class, it just looks like a great looking car. Last but not least, we have the current generation C class right here. What I like about this C class, the 2022 model, what the changes they made, is look at the shoulder line here. And now we're back to having one shoulder line that stretches across the entire width of the car, which I think is very German and it's very sedan-like. So I'm really glad that they reduced the styling a little bit and came back with this beautiful shoulder line right here. You can see that it um, goes from the front to the, to the rear end in a beautiful, just a single curvature. And on top of that, we have this traditional line right here as well that goes pretty much across the entire length of the car. And another thing with the proportions of the new C-Class is the front end here. You can see that the hood, it's more like a boxy hood right here instead of having it be slopey like this in the graphics. Now we have a more upright front end and I do prefer that over the previous generation C-Class. What I don't prefer about the um, uh, current 2022 C-Class is the grill. I want to have the grill inverted like we have on the 2015 model. Like it's a smiley grill instead of a frowning grill if that makes sense. So now let's jump into photo Photoshop here and continue in Photoshop and redesign the Mercedes 190E from 1982. That's when it started its, its production and it lasted 
lasted for 11 years before it was, it, it was discontinued in 1993. It was Mercedes's first compact class automobile. One of my all time favorite automotive designers, Bruno Sacco, was responsible for the design of the 190E. He also did the E class of the time and he also did one of the most beautiful roadsters convertibles of all, all time, in my opinion, the R129 SL500. He was also responsible for that. Bruno Sacco just knew what he was doing and he left behind an incredible legacy and was a huge part of the designs of Mercedes during a time when they really had, as we talked about, their brand identity dialed in across the entire lineup and was, it was just a powerhouse when it comes to design uh, of Mercedes of this era. And this was overall just a magical era for Mercedes-Benz, not only in design but in overall build quality and engineering as well. Mercedes spent over 800 million dollars developing and researching the 190e before they actually built it and admitted themselves that the car was massively over engineered and that's kind of what we remember of the cars the Mercedes is of this time over engineered quality and Autobahn locomotives that never complained about crossing continents so let's talk about the redesign here and what's going on so what I wanted to do is simply keep the traditional design of the 190e the traditional proportions the Bruno Sacco lines but add modern styling to those proportions same I did I did a similar redesign with the Mercedes W140 S class a while back over a year ago and I think it looks really cool if we could have almost like a resto mod but with the body lines and the sculptures in the body of the car them being very modern as well so with the shoulder line having a reminiscent feeling of the current Mercedes C class the front lights as well if you know you have uh, one LED for the C-Class, one LED strip for the C-Class, two for the E-Class and three for the S-Class. So in this case we want to have one big major LED in the front end to resemble C-Class as we had in the uh, previous generation C-Class from 2015. And simply put, just apply some modern details onto the beautiful portions of the 190E. I think that would be a cool idea and I think, I've, I've said this before, but I think it's, if companies took old models that uh, people like myself we grew up with and really appreciate starting now to appreciate the design and the elegance and the thought that went in that went, went into these designs compared to today today when you have a lot of overstyling and just for just adding lines for the sake of having more lines onto the car that is going away slowly today we see a, um, a reduction of overstyled cars these days even from South Korean brands that are usually known for a lot of overstyling the past decade or so even them are starting to reduce over styling but back in the day everything had a purpose and I really like that about the brands and every category of car they look very differently and within a brand you had a very strong brand identity like Mercedes had during this time and they still have today as well that's the feeling that I want to try to create and uh, implement in this redesign right here I hope I would see start to see something like these these designs on the roads at some point where manufacturer takes all the designs that are traditional for the brand and kind of just implement a new graphic and new features onto those proportions that that would be my dream to see more companies do stuff like this in real life once again i want to thank my sponsor squarespace don't forget to use the sketch to get 10 percent off your first purchase of a domain or a website down below in the description